The Voice of Value, empowering sales and marketing leaders to make value clear. Hi, this is Chad Quinn, President of Ecosystems, and welcome to The Voice of Value. Today, we are joined by special guest, Mary Shea. Mary is Principal Analyst at Forrester. Mary started her career at Forrester after graduating with a PhD from Kent State University, held various leadership positions in sales. She was a chief commercial officer and even CEO of a sales and marketing consultancy. She's now back at Forrester as a principal analyst in the B2B group and is also an adjunct assistant professor of marketing at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. Welcome, Mary. Well, thank you so much, Chad. It's great to be here today. I know there's a lot of research with Forrester right now on the age of the customer being this this moment in time. What does that mean for us in sales and marketing for 2016? Right. It's a great question, Chad, and certainly a theme that's very integral into just about everything that we're writing here at Forrester. And so before I delve into the impact on a sales and marketing standpoint, I want to just talk a little bit about how we define the age of the customer at Forrester. And so we're defining this as a 20-year business cycle in which the most successful enterprises will reinvent themselves to systematically understand and serve a more powerful set of customers. Right now, we're about five years into that cycle. If you think about the age of the customer, and I tend to think about it uh, with regard to a timeline, maybe looking at the 20th century, we are thinking about today's B2B buyers as being more empowered than they ever have been in uh, before. So if you think about the types of organizations or companies that held power in the past, in the early 20th century, you know, it was the companies that were able to crack the code on um, mass manufacturing, right? So those became Uh the industrial powerhouses. And then in the mid-century, when global commercial travel became available, it was those companies that could really figure out these complex distribution uh, channels like uh, Walmart or P&G, for example. And then towards the latter part of the century, you think about the connected PC and the information age and those uh, companies of having a lot of power. Well, today... If you think about the online and mobile channels, customers are really empowered with information. They can get access to competitive information, they have access to pricing information, and they're bringing into the business environment all the things that they do in their personal life, the way they interact with the big brands, going onto websites like an Amazon or a BMW or a Nike. And they want to interact in a B2B environment when they're evaluating a service or product that they might want to purchase from a vendor the same way. What this means is that we're in a pretty transformational period in terms of how B2B buyers are engaging, educating themselves, and going about the buying process, as well as how the selling organizations really need to adapt their engagement styles to meet the customer uh, the way they want to engage. So if you think about a lot of the research that we're doing, and I'm sure many of the folks in your audience are are a barrage with a sort of omnichannel information that, you know, buyers are doing 74% of their research online before they want to engage with a rep. They prefer to buy online once they've made their decision. Only 2% of them are going to actually take a cold call. There's a lot of doom and gloom around what does this mean for the salesperson? And I think, you know, what it means is that there's just less and less direct access that the salesperson is getting with the buyer, whether it's in a remote, in-person, or digital type of situation, and that simultaneously they need to constantly raise the bar of their interactions with that buyer so that when they actually do get to interact, it's a much higher level of engagement. So they're providing more consultative value. They're providing thought leadership. They're, you know, delivering insights based on analytics that they've done. So it's a pretty transformative time for the B2B seller, and I think a very, very exciting time for those who are open to change and who are intellectually curious. I love these themes of the age of the customer and being customer obsessed. But if everyone's moving or skating to that puck, so to speak, how do you differentiate? What I see is that the biggest challenges are you know, not only with the clients that we work with, but the clients, the, the firms that we see, is that, that the ability to execute flawlessly. So I think the companies that are able to really move their sales organizations away from leading 
with sort of this product centricity that we've seen in the past. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, as we do, do research again and again, we see that executives, very senior executives, are pretty uninspired by the types of engagements that they're getting with sales folks, saying they lead with product, they don't understand or have empathy for my role. They can't add value as part of the conversation. And I think a lot of salespeople tend to default to this comfort around, you know, let me position and present my product, or maybe I'll talk a little bit about the industry. And so I think the real differentiation will come with the organizations that figure out how to really, really train and develop their sales organizations. So of course, they need to have an understanding of the product and services that they sell. But to be able to engage in a way that's really thought-provoking, tells the buyer something new that they didn't know before, um, and to become more of that consultant and trusted partner. It's it's easy to understand the concept, I found, less easy to really execute in, in a flawless way. And that's where the difference will come. Yeah, I love it. And, I, and you're so right. Execution becomes the differentiator. In, in that spirit, if I'm a sales and marketing leader listening to the voice of value, what would be Mary's advice to me of something I can do in the next two weeks to bring some of these principles that we've talked about back into my company, back into my teams, back into my sales cycles? Yeah, I I mean, there's a number of different things um, that you could do. One is partner up with your marketers and really do a quick analysis on uh, what your demand gen looks like and what your inbound and outbound marketing looks like. How effective are you? How effective is the team? Are you getting more leads than you can handle? Are there areas where you could potentially amp up results in the pipeline by, you know, inking some sort of a a deal with a provider, whether it's a hard-to-get-to market, whether... Um, it's a new product you're launching or even you want to sell event seats. Is there a problem that you could solve or an opportunity that's being untapped where you can get more revenue? The next thing I might do is really just do a quick assessment of my sales team. You know, where, where, do, they, where do they sit with regard to some of these new skills and characteristics that they're going to need to have today um, as well as tomorrow? And Forrester has a... Um, an assessment tool that we can license to clients or, or do a workshops with and help them really understand where the sales force sits and what type of uh, clients and prospects they have and how to best match the team uh, with the market. I think um, also just take a very, very quick look at the technologies you're using. You know, if your sales team isn't using technologies that link your database to different types of social media, do you have a content management system that's helping, you know, push the right type of content to the sales rep at the right point in the cycle? Are you really using technology to the fullest to really rebalance the sales force to be as empowered as the customer is in this new environment. Excellent. Actionable advice. Mary, what research projects do you have underway or in the future that our listeners may benefit from? Sure. As I mentioned earlier in the conversation, I will be publishing a brief called May the Force of the Millennials Be With You. (laughs) um, A little bit of a nod to uh, George Lucas and all the excitement there, but... um, you know, it's really looking at how do you engage, enable, and manage the millennial sales rep. So, you know, the uh, this rep is quite a bit different than ones that some of your sales leaders may have been managing for the ne- for the last ten years. And so, I think that's going to be a really exciting uh, brief for folks to read. And then, uh, you know, other things that I'll be working on will really look at. You know, how do you enable uh, this new um, digital sales force? So what are some of the different technologies and uh, supporting platforms that you can use to equalize this balance of power between the customer and the, the seller? We've heard so much about, you know, this customer has so much power. Well, there's a lot of things that sellers can do to really equalize the footing. I'm going to talk probably quite a bit more in the research about um, the role of inside sales over the course of the entire selling model. So looking at the role of inside sales um, in the process of discovery, exploring, buying, using, engaging, and so on. And then also really we'll be spending some time looking at sales and marketing alignment and um, where that's going in the future. Chad, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. I feel like we could probably go on for about three or four hours here. So I hope uh, at some point we'll find ourselves in the same city and can meet. I would as well. Thank you, Mary. My pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Take care.